Um, it is Wednesday, September 24th, August 24th. I'm sorry, August 24th, thank mm -hmm. heaven. Uh, 5.15 p.m., we're calling our meeting to order. And present, of course, are Roxanne Parent and Russell French and myself and Lori Lucier. And it's not a very huge night tonight, but we do have some important things to go over. Um, as always, let's read the minutes first. Okay, just one very minor spelling correction. <laughs> I think you can do that by hand. I think I can. Yep. <laughs> then instead of then. <laughs> bite me more, Island. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously? Yes. Seriously, you're going to call me out in public on that? <laughs> no. Wow. Forget I said that. Okay, it so is now recorded for in perpetuity. <laughs> I want to save this one. Okay. okay. All right. Make sure you correct that. Type. Have you any? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would really mess Do you have up. any questions, changes, or anything? Um. Oh, because we need to vote on whether we're accepting it as amended or as written. Oh, well, it's already amended. Well, mean? that's true. It's spelling corrections. Oh. Review comparison of one, one and a third story homes. One and a third story homes. That's what the big We went over thing. the chart a little bit. We looked at the 1.33 stories. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess you could have put on mind that um, Russ refused to do it until we got the write it in yep just hand write it in okay yep yeah on the one that we signed that would be good i would say he declined to vote oh and well not refused well, would you like to write it properly well no but it, it's <laughs> <laughs> what's the difference refuse decline semantics until ah. Next meeting is scheduled for September 24th. See that? See that? Two typos. Oh, golly. So what happens when you have the meetings just one right on top of the other. I, I'm Until <laughs> And it's election season. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, oh, you didn't look at that, what I changed. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, look at that and see if you're okay with your... What I wrote. <laughs> Your notes. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, I'm going to change that September to August. Oh, what did August? Oh, well, oh well, next I'm, weekend, right? Today, oh. today. Yeah. Oh, today. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So move to accept as amended. I agree. Or second? Second. second. Yep. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We have taken care of that. Here's the agenda. Among other things, when I contacted the person from Vision Valuation Systems, um, 
She sent us goodies, which is kind of nice. We each have a nice little notebook. <laughs> and there are pens. I think a couple of them may have disappeared. And little, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, this is, this is Vision Government <laughs> Solutions. It's um, a validated evaluation program. OK. But uh, I wanted somebody to come and talk to us. I know. They none of them do that anymore. <laughs> Oh, they do probably these just recently. This well, is what they do. Well, they do these demos and everything. I have the other one loaded up for us to see tonight. The oh, uh, one from Patriot. Yeah, mm. yeah. She will host vision. The, the girl from Vision will host a um, Zoom meeting for us. Oh, okay. Where we would be able to ask her questions mm -hmm. because she'll be on with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so we have to look over this information and come yes. up with questions. It's like you can't. Yes. So this is a little We also more heard time from an authoritative it. source. That <coughs> it sounds like Vision is sort of struggling. Oh. That Patriots really taking over the industry in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Which isn't always a good thing. I know. Why is that? Because it, it falls in line with the larger the company that gets and the more secure their customer service goes to well in handbasket because they're so set and secure and ah, we've got most of the state, it doesn't matter. Well, yes, but they also know the state mm -hmm. and they know all the oh, towns. Yes. So it's very, to me, it makes sense that they would have a better idea of how evaluations go. Do you want to copy our agenda? Um, oh, you, you took the minutes. I didn't know oh, yeah, I didn't agenda. have this agenda yet. Uh, um, that's just my opinion. Not, know. And it's easier because they're local to, you know, help. Yeah. Still, okay. still looking at months upon months upon months of paperwork and begging for funds to change programs. Oh, I know. I do feel obliged to look at the alternatives. Of course. Yeah. yeah. We have a bill from Core Logic, which is the modern name for Marshall and Swift. And uh, this is a renewal notice for their updates, which they send us quarterly for uh, values. And so I think that we should continue with that because come January, we'll be looking for updated figures and all. Uh, don't need them during the course of the year, but once a year we do. It is, let's see, we'll give them our tax exempt number. So that will take that off. Mm -hmm. uh, 369.95 plus $10 for shipping. So it'll be 379.95. And that covers all four quarters. Yes. Right. Okay. Can you just get one quarter or? Uh, it's the same price just about for oh. one quarter as it is just to be subscribed. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. And so if you'd like to initial that, we'll get that into the pipeline. Oh. <laughs> I got my initials backwards. <laughs> okay, we've done this. Paid bills. Thank you. Oops, I'll do that. That's all right. Okay. Recent sales, new listings, and permits. We have a recent sale on um, the Jandaloni property up on 221 Thompson Road. Uh, the trailer up there with all the acreage that did sell. Oh, mm -hmm. It sold for how much? 355, I believe. 254. 254. Okay. Which trailer? It's the older one up top on the Banking, this is the close one way to, out back that we went to. It's near Carolyn Chase's house. Yeah. It's close to her house. It's the one on the larger piece of land because he cut off the small section for his sister and kept 14. Yeah, that one was the one we went out to in the back, kind of. Yes. The back, just that's his sister's, and that's not okay. sold. All right. Yeah. But this one sold for 254 and we have it valued at 145 uh the pictures indicated a well-used trailer mm. <laughs> let's put it that way i think i saw that online didn't they have pictures of it online yeah mm -hmm. they had a, oh. they had some not a great number you can just initially you've seen it okay yeah if you would please and um we'll see what happens these two new buyers i would be tempted to consider it a teardown yeah, I believe and just get rid of what's there. Well, probably wouldn't. Yeah, 
and then you know build a court after that mm -hmm. figure you bought the land and or they may build in the original section that he had planned on putting the house and then tear down the trailer after they're sure. already in there right there's a good bit of space to work with 14 acres yep and it's a he has a nice south facing meadow looking down from the trailer yeah so it'll be a nice place for a home and gardens and so forth yeah Okay, new permits. We have a good assortment of them. Yes. There we go, two each. Okay. I didn't get that. I printed out the plans for the house. Okay. Rogers and Rice. Just says twenty thousand. That one's okay. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Who's that? That's on me. I printed the permit. I didn't pull the attachments. Friedman. Oh, okay. Gary Friedman. Yeah. Yep. Garage yeah. So don't, don't say one car. Room. Just garage. One car. One car. Yep. I don't know that he has a garage up at his house. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this is for the new house. Hmm. Yes. Mm. Yes, I have the plans for that. Mm -hmm. And a Conway builder is building it. I see that. Which is nice. Mm -hmm. Going by there. Yeah. So they, they only put it in for the wiring, which is kind of odd. Well, no, they put in for the building permit too. Um, the electrical and the plumbing will be in individual permits. You'll see a right. residential new build, and then oh. you'll see plumb new house, mm -hmm. electric. Well, yeah, house. that's what I'm seeing mm -hmm. the new wiring for the right. house. Right. Now, you said uh, you noticed a driving by? Oh, I marked they pour the foundation or anything or whatever. Oh, they're building. Oh, good, good. So yeah. we can go do a framing visit. Yeah, they're, they're getting it up there. They're Excellent. Doing... I know they were anxious to move right along with it. Yeah, no, they're doing the, with all that heat we had, they mm. were out there working and it's like, holy wow. wow. Well, grab the time while you know. Well, the summer is hot, I guess. <laughs> it's uh, going to be a Cape style house, very traditional look to it. I believe it's on just a frost wall. And the main floor, is a rectangle really with a four season, three season room bumped out of it. Uh, and it will be kitchen, dining area, uh, great room or living room, master bedroom, master bath, and then a mud room and laundry on the main floor. And then upstairs will be two bedrooms and a bath. So it looks like it would be a very comfortable design to live on the one floor and then have company for upstairs. Well, they upstairs got kids. Company. Yeah. Can I see that? Yes, oh, absolutely. Okay. There. There's the, uh Knows. Yep. Oh, so it's not a walkout. But I was thinking it was a walkout. No, no. I think it's a. I think it's a frost wall. Russ can tell him when he sees that. Hmm. Okay. Cool. And who's doing the wiring? Oh, Shenevert from Ludlow. Okay. Oh, do I miss that? Yep, the holies are putting up a solar array. Mm -hmm.
Yep, the one car garage. So not a whole, well, like one new house is very exciting these days uh, to have that much construction going on. Define. No, I mean, they, they got a door going outside. I don't know what I can't tell whether it's, I don't think it's a hatchway. Oh, okay. You it looked know, like a walk. Oh, you found a, okay, you did find a, yeah, a basement plan. I, I, I can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you my glasses, what, Adam, what, to what's, yours. What's the circle? Mean? Water heater. Oh, all right. Yeah, you're right. There is a basement underneath it. Yep. Yeah. I can't read it. Yeah. Yep. It's time for new glass. And there's glass. a line here that says future furnished so finished like space. Kind of oh, that's going to go on under the uh, three season room, I'll bet. Yeah. 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 Well, you're calling it a cape? You're calling it a cape? Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. Just from what I see framing, it doesn't look like an actual cape. It's kind of. It's, it's not what you'd call a cape, pod cape, but it's, you know, it's, oh, that's it's probably a sun. one and a third. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll see when we get some better pictures and a little bit more information and make sure that it is built according to the plans. Uh -huh. We have to double check with that when we go back for our final check, because sometimes things change. Well, and, yeah. Yeah. And so we always ask if it was built according to plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Check on that. Chapter applications, they've been coming in nicely. And so we have several to review. And uh, I think they look okay. I double checked everything. New ones, old ones? Old ones, renewals. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we'll look at them, we'll agree on them all, and then we'll sign. So this one is considered forest plus the recreational? Well, she filled in both, but they're actually in a forest management plan. Oh, okay. Oh, because I'd like to make sure there aren't any questions oh, okay. or anything like that about any of them. Mm -hmm. Then we'll vote to accept them and then we sign. Okay.
not going to reach out. What were they? She was in Chapter 61. Oh. And uh, her forest management plan expired. Mm -hmm. And so she does not want to have another forest management plan done. So she's just switching over to that, mm -hmm. which is possible to do with no penalty at any time, basically. Oh, you don't have mine in here. No, I don't. Did we get it filled fill out? Fill out? Uh, I don't know. I gave it to you, and you were going to check. Yeah. On the yeah. Thing. So she had more, more than this. She's got more. She sold most of it. Yeah, she she sold a lot of the land. She did, the piece up by the old house is not in chapter. Oh, okay. it's just the piece attached to her house and across the road. Okay. That field in front of Potter's and everything. Yeah. I think she had some up near the old house. So, okay. Yes. That's not in it. No, it isn't. Okay, so we have this batch of chapter renewals to process. Do we have any questions or concerns about any of them? No, no, no. Shall we move to accept them all and sign them accordingly? Aye. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, uh, Ralph, okay, he's 61A. So we have to consider what he gave as a sales figure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that box has to be checked off. But the sales, it's not, it's not a whole lot. Doesn't need to be. I don't does it. Yeah, you have to have a certain volume of sales. Um, But it doesn't have to be large. It that figure demonstrates to us as well as what we see when we ride by that he is indeed farming the land and cutting hay for his beefers and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fill in that other page. Should it come up, the, the state does not consider raising horses to be an agricultural activity. Yeah. And so they're under um, recreation. Mm -hmm. They can be under recreation unless they're racing or anything like that, of course. Well. Mm. Oh, yeah, but they don't consider that. No. Well, everyone has the, you know, the right to sell them, but someone who's raising horses as a commodity, breeding horses, mm -hmm. is not really covered in these. Uh, I don't know that that category is covered in. in Massachusetts chapter. Well, they don't produce anything. Right. They don't produce they anything horticultural, no, no meat, no agriculture, hair, no right. Wool, right. Almost wood. Then, wool. Yeah. I said, and oh. wood, wood as well, you know, for the chapter. Right. I mean, 61. other animals that you would raise. Yes. For agriculture, you can get milk from or meat from or yes. wool mm -hmm. from. Or and milk. they are covered in chapter right. 61A. Hmm. Yeah, so sheep and goats and anything like that, you know, pigs, beef. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got geese. I got to sell some. <laughs> oh boy, go with too many. They can make a yard, unfortunately, slippery very fast. No. They, uh, 
wander. Mm -hmm. Are they a resident group or just passing through? Oh, no, they're mine. Oh. I've been raising them. Oh, I see. We got a bunch of babies. It's fun. I'll bet. What kind of geese? Oh, that's right. Uh, oh, yeah. Toulouse. Mm -hmm. We would encourage any listeners or viewers to send in your chapter forms as soon as you can. We'd appreciate it. Otherwise, we at the end of things, we'll have a pile about that. I had to deal with one night. And it's much nicer to be able to do a few at a time as we go along here. I just saw saw there was some grants available for any uh anybody in the chapter sixty one. Is there? <laughs> oh, good. Uh, periodically, the state will um have some money available for those going into 61 forest management to help pay the initial costs of a uh, forest plan management plan because that has to be done by a professional forester and usually costs seven fifty eight hundred dollars uh -huh. or more maybe now and um so they've they've helped with that in the past mm -hmm. yeah where did you happen to notice that my daughter sent it to me because she oh. knew I was a for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she says, right. check this out. And I said, okay. Terrific. All right. Okay. So that takes care of the chapter applications. Report on 23 values. Fiscal 23 values. Well, uh, Russ and I came in on Sunday and we sorted out one of the complicated questions with how they use different numbers that have been input to calculate the values, how Tyler does it. And we were able to work out um, exactly what figures are used where. And I showed that to you yesterday. The sheet, sheet of paper that had the lines where I show plus minus times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that helped us very much, I think. That really clarified that a great deal. The generators still are not calculating for this year, but I have a, a repair ticket in for that. And otherwise, I am working on the um, percentages right now. Anything that is a mixed use property that's in a combination of chapter plus residential or industrial plus residential or you know commercial. Um, any one of those has to be analyzed once the value is, is achieved and broken down into the percentages of how much of the land is, what percent of the land value is residential and what percent is commercial and the same with any buildings. So that's kind of fussy little work and it has to be done every year. Uh, it's not done automatically by the program. So working on that and also on the chapter 61B values, especially in any um, mixed use property where it's a, a residential plus chapter 61B because the program is doing uh, a much better job on calculating them in general, but it doesn't get it. If you, if you had say two acres out to start with and then the rest of your land, if you go into the chapter 61B with two acres out then the rest of your land, it will calculate it perfectly. 
But if you go from two acres out, full, full fair market value to one acre out, can't do it. So we have to do it by hand and just put it in, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But um, each one has to be checked. Mm -hmm. So it's a tiresome process, but I sent a note to Mike Coachella, our town accountant today, telling him that I hope to have all of the figures ready to submit at the end of next week for preliminary approval. That would supposedly come in during Labor Day week. We would get word on that and be able to meet with the selectmen on that second Monday or the mm -hmm. Yeah, the one after Labor Day week. Well, they're meeting on the 29th and they're meeting again on the 12th. And that's when we'd be meeting with them with any luck for a classification hearing. Yep. And then we would submit the final figures right away and hopefully have our final approval by the 16th. And that gives Jan two full weeks. They would like three, but it can't happen. I don't see that happening. Um, but two full weeks for the QDS people to do their run and uh, we'll get it checked out and, and all that and have bills get out very close to on time, if not on time. That's the goal, of course. <laughs> That's always the goal, yes. But uh, so that's where we stand with those. The changes that Roya proposed with adding 8% across the board, that's working very, very well with bringing values. Um, the, the properties that have sold are now, I think I mentioned last week, working out at about 97, 98% overall of fair market value, and that's where we like to be. Uh, a little on the underside, and <laughs> well, that sounds like a I pretty this, uh, this thing was tweeting at me. <laughs> <laughs> it has a strainer to keep the fruit full, and it makes noises. Yeah. But uh, so that's where we are right now. Just continuing to work on that, on those those matters. I say, you know, they're fussy. I do them at home. I do them here, whatever. As far as looking ahead to 23 is concerned, it seems to me we've not had as many sales this year as we did last year up until this time. So it'd be interesting to see how many we have to work with and where they're falling into place. Uh, next year, we may end up just staying pat or we may need to adjust up or, a little, up or down a little bit again. Mm -hmm. But if town meeting does as good a job of uh, not putting anything through as a raise and appropriate, except the budget, that's great because that means the town, the rate will come down. The rate will be coming down this year. The tax rate will be coming down. We can't yet predict how much, but it will be a significant amount because we have a significant amount of new valuation and we have the new growth from the utilities. Mm -hmm. So the tax rate will be coming down. Yep. But does it match the increase of 8%? So it's I like, don't know yet. So it's like, yeah, because our um, it'd be nice if we could have the bills stay the same for a year yeah, or very, very close. Right. Yeah. Even though our assessments go up. Right. Be nice. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. To have a, essentially the same amount out of pocket. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would. Mm -hmm. uh, won't know for a little while yet. But Offhand, I think it would work kind of like last year where the amount out of pocket increased by about one and a half percent, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the year before, generally speaking. So now our next item on the agenda on the agenda is uh, finishing up Roxy's 22 appeal. Mm -hmm. Do you feel differently tonight about speaking to that in your personal opinion? I don't know. What have you? Have you heard anything from them? No. No, but we found in what the problem was. Right. That that answered some of the problem, yeah. What was the problem? The way the most steps of calculation. Uh, but it didn't make any changes there. 
Well, you showed me that you got it to both. I didn't yes. see it printed out. I printed it out. I didn't get it. And we had changed your, corrected your house and it now we figured out what was making it read grade good mm -hmm. when we were putting, putting average or condition good, condition good. And we found that out. And it, again, it's what fields it reads and uses in the calculation. It has three fields up near the top of the form, like I showed you yesterday, mm -hmm. for interior, exterior, and general physical condition. Right. So you fill in those, but then down at the bottom, it asks for condition. Mm -hmm. So you put something in there, and when it's calculating, it reads one and not the other. So did you change the top fields on mine? All the average. And But it didn't change if it... It did not change the calculation on the house. It's still 127.9. So how can, if it was calculating three, five, and good, uh -huh. the numbers were good. It wasn't... <laughs> I, I, the computer was... The program was calculating as good because the numbers were reading good that you had in there. I don't know what you mean by oh, that. Well, by this chart that you gave me that I was looking at. Okay. Um, it came out good. And that's I get my stuff order organized. We tried it a number of different ways on Sunday. So I, I wondered why you did it on Sunday and not when I was around to even pay attention to see what's happening. We needed to get together and do it, and, and uh, I didn't know that you'd be able to follow it awfully well. And we wanted to get it done before tonight. I would have followed it. I'm, okay. But well, it's like, I apologize. Well, I don't, I wasn't even notified that you were doing that. Oh, I knew you were out of town. Right. So that's my question is you knew I wasn't available, so you did it then. <laughs> right. No. We, we fixed the problem. I did not, we did not do it on Sunday because you're out of town. Okay. What am I looking at here? That's the main chart things. All right. Mm -hmm. This is when we had the groups of camps. And, and then if you put it on top of here. So I'm highlighted in the, in the mm -hmm. pink. And so that is. Exterior condition, you have me as good. We did. Okay, so so you changed it. And, yes. And here is condition is average. Mm -hmm. And here, what is this condition? The physical condition as good. And it comes up to 127. So if you've changed that, mm -hmm. the program should have changed the totals. It's still calculated out to 127.9. We tried changing the condition all the way from poor up to excellent. And it did not have a huge amount of change amongst them. Uh, one thing that did, did cause a great deal of change was the effect of age. And I've been talking to another town and she says, you're not supposed to change the effect of age, but that I does not that. make any sense at all. I saw that email. Yeah. That does not make any sense because it, the effective age is set at 1995 forever. Forever? Well, it, well that's, we, we went, we spent a lot of time of this on Sunday because I didn't agree with what I thought the computer was doing. What is the computer doing? Not changing the effective age. Right. We mm -hmm. thought that it. Well, should you not change it unless there is like major upgrades? Then you would change the effective age. Well, I, mean, I my feeling is that it should the effective age should change yearly with a percentage, or there must be a program in there somewhere that does something. I don't know what. It seems but to I mean, me that the value is driven by effective age and condition, and the effective age in our whole program was driven was a combination of physical age and condition. That came up with the effective age. Mm -hmm. This is taking an effective age that was determined the other way and applying it against condition 
But that effective age, if that isn't going to change from year to year. It does. I, I mean, I've looked at a lot of from 20 to 21 and the effective years is changing. Well, we looked at a lot of them and it is not. They're not changing whatsoever. They're, not, I've, I've they're, seen they're all change. three years old. They're all what came over from the old program. Previous to that, they were changing every year. The old program. Well, the old program. We yeah. entered the effect, the old physical date. age into right. this program, and it has not changed. So it looks to me from reading these charts that the effective year is of changes from grade also. When you change the grade, the effective year gets changed. Well, you're when you're changing the grade, you're saying the house is in better condition, so it would be the effective year would be a little bit newer, I would think. That's when things change, is that when the grade illogical. changes. I mean, and I, I wouldn't see, see it changing unless the condition of the house changes. But I mean, then I've seen it, the grade go up and the effective year not change. So I just don't, I'm having a hard, that's why I struggle with all these charts. I'm looking at them and it doesn't make sense. And well, that's what I, Sunday, I couldn't get the effective age. I, it just didn't make any sense. No, none of this makes sense. That's why I'm mm -hmm. having a trouble saying, I'm uh, when I first started, I'm comparing to other homes and it doesn't make sense to me how mine changed so much. And I mean, I got it all here and some of these have changed. There's a few of them that went down from a B to a C and the effective year changed. So, I mean, I can, Which, okay, can, you, can you yeah. give me one? Okay. Right here. Okay. That one changed. Well, this is. Right here. Okay, this one here. Right here, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's the actual, actual age. I know that. And there's the effective age. Right, know. I know. Okay. And so you're saying. Do you want that, me to say, show you from the year before? No, I'll go look it up. Okay, good. I have it. But. That one doesn't make sense. Is that Truce Road? Uh, I guess it is. Okay. In 21, the year it was years were written, built 1981, effective age 2000. And the grade was average to good. What was the, wait a minute, what was the, no, what was the grade? She just said average to good. Well, yeah. So that would be a C grade? B minus. Well, that's. Now, this is 2021. Oh, tw right. Okay. And it went down, the grade changed, and that went down to a C for 22. That's wow. what I'm saying. And you're saying the. Uh, the 22 changes were made to try and get more uniformity with. Okay, 2022, it went down to average. Mm hmm. The effective year did not change. It was still 2010. I thought, I thought you said it was 20. In, in fiscal 21, mm -hmm. the effective age, oh, it was 2000. Right, that's what I'm saying, oh. it changed. The effective year, was there more done? No, not on that particular house. Um, Do you have any other examples? Oh, well, let me see. I have to do my comparison chart that I did. All right. <laughs> you can just give me the, the address, that'd be good. We okay. do try to not name, you know, name names at, at meetings. Okay. Anyone is welcome to come in to our meetings. Mm -hmm. Or to come into the office at any time. Oh, I don't have the but, the um. 
Not that I have them listed by names. I don't have them by addresses. Okay, well, that's fine. I can look at it. Okay. Pull it up. I didn't put the addresses. So I was looking at why did yeah. um where are they? Yeah. Yeah. Look at theirs. In 2021, effective year was 2010. Yep. The grade was average to good, B minus. Yes. The average condition. Yes. No, okay. the, that's the value, 24.9. The condition was average, not average to good on 2021. B minus grade. Average condition, average CDU on 2021. Yes, yes. Okay. Average to good grade. I said was B minus. Okay, yeah. yeah. In 2022, grade went to C. The year build was 2004, the effective year 2005. That's only one year difference. The grade went to average and conditioned above average. Now, remember for 2022, we did make up that chart, uh, trying to get uniformity in how we looked at log houses. And so some 22 is going to change because of that. Where I was saying that I felt that, you know, interior, flat interior walls were a superior feature to the rounded ones and things like that. And we were... Um, yeah, but you changed the whole grade. Yeah. And because one. that is, if that, if for example, flat interior walls are a structural given. Mm -hmm. They're not a decorating choice or anything like that. So they would affect, that would be an, have an effect on grade. Not on condition in any way, but on grade. Another one I thought of recently was houses where they had people carefully planned and pre-drilled all of their electrical wiring holes mm -hmm. and had the switches up where they should be and that kind of thing. Um, that ends up being a better feature. Well, I think all the newer ones are all like that. Nobody has the wiring going up, do they? Well, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think there is. No. There are, but, but this that's not the case when we built. When this one is built in 2004, and we looked at the pictures, and it's like, I just don't understand how you, you're changing grades on these. It doesn't make sense to me. Which, the only time any grades were changed was because of that discussion and that, you know, trying to get them uniform in re response to your questions and concerns. And so we looked at them all that year and we said, okay, let's try and think of some characteristics that determine whether it's a good or an average or a very good. One being design and shape, that's one of them. Another being, does it have flat logs or rounded logs inside? Does it have a nice wide stable wooden spline between the logs, or is it just the rickety piece of masonite? Um, all of these features contribute to grade. Mm -hmm. And so when we went through the list of all the log houses, some of the grades were changed based on that list of char char characteristics. Yeah, and one went up quite high, and I don't understand why that one got changed either. Um, it is on Bond Street. Okay. Hmm. 
2021. Mm -hmm. See, I don't the see effective that. age was 2000. The house was actually built in 1978. Same as mine. Okay. It mm -hmm. had a grade of average and a condition of good. House value was 134.9. Mm -hmm. In 2022, mm -hmm. It had an effective year of 2005. 15. I have oh, wait a minute. Sorry. You're right. Yes. You're right. Yeah. Grade average to good. Tradition average. So the, the, and the cost of the house went up very significantly. And Russ and I found that the change in the effective age had a, an immediate and big impact on change in value. Yes, and but the grade you you move the grade from a C to a B minus. That was based on those other characteristics. That should not be a B minus. What, what changed in that house? Different. I'd have to look at the chart and see where it fell. I can't remember one out of 40 houses right now. Mm. It has exactly the same rounded, same shape, same everything. And that's why I question, why are these things changing? Um, and that significantly changed the price of that house. Yes, it did. Yes. And, and okay, so this is in, the, in here. It says, you're looking at exterior and it says three, which is a good. What's this one? It says... Exterior, interior and exterior, both three. Overall is a three. And in here, it's got average. So how can that be an average? If they're all listed as good, and then it says average. That's not right. We found some of that too, where it was saying different things up there where at least lists the three conditions. Yeah. And then it was pulling a condition down here from someplace else. Yeah, we were trying to figure, figure out, out which which area it was actually using. It's so it looks and to which me. area was simply a field that we could fill in to make us happy. That was annoying, yeah. So to me, that is valuating at good. Even though it says average, when you've got all these numbers saying good and then the final condition is a three, which is good, it's pricing or assessing it as good. And that's the same thing that happened to my house. It's got a three, a three, which is good, an average and a good. And it says average in there, but it's assessing it as good. Your final figures are all based now on the average, 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 average. And it's being- well, well, you're saying that, but it didn't change from these, which was good, average, good. And that's exactly what we're saying. We can't figure out why. Okay, I agree. We can't figure this out. This isn't making sense. And, and, and the, I spent a long time on Sunday. We were discussing the dates. And I, yeah. for the life of me, I can't see what it's doing. Okay. Effective age, date, effective age. Okay, so I agree. Saying, this, that's, I, I, I agree. I, I don't understand. I mean, I don't know how computer what, what it does when you put things in, but I can see mm -hmm. just in my head that it doesn't do what I think it should. Exactly. Right. When it I'm does looking not at, seem to be working. I'm looking at these charts, article. and you, when you look at the charts, it does not make sense to when the totals come out. And that's my what I've been saying all along. A lot of this does mm -hmm. not make sense. Well, right at the moment, that's what we got to work with. We did, like, I yeah. don't know. What else? You know, I mean, if you put it in and that's what you get, I don't know how you, that, I guess that's why we're looking at somebody else. I don't. Yeah. Yes. I, well, hopefully. I mean, I don't know what you, I mean, you have to continue I mean, doing something, but. I, you know, 
when we we took some of them. As I say, all the effective dates came over three years ago yes. when the program was changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we tried, and, and I I don't agree that that's right. I, I think that in three years, there should be some change somewhere along the way in the effective date. Yeah. Well, you also have to figure depreciation too, don't you? Right. Mm -hmm. But that supposedly that comes in, in, a, in a a, its own calculation that it calculates in yeah. yeah i don't exactly because well, i'm so, still old-fashioned i yeah i still add and well, subtract and i look in my yeah. head and i look at something and i think oh, about that yeah i i agree i like to look at things i like i'm a visual and i have to mm -hmm. sit here and look at them and compare and all that so let me ask you this just trying to understand um, the effective year. If you're comparing a house to another house and they're both got the same effective year, they should be very similar, even though it's older or newer, correct? Because uh, the, the effective, effective year the effective is what age is what you're be, supposed to be valuing it. Yes, at that, that should year. be driving the value. Okay. But that's, it's, that's exactly why I said the effective age should change. It shouldn't. It shouldn't mm -hmm. stay. So that five years from now, if you're if, if a house has an effective age of two thousand right now, mm -hmm. five it, years from now, it probably should have an effective age of like two thousand and four or five. Why? And, and this program is keeping it at the same effective age. I don't. Yeah, but I as as a non-assessor, I don't understand why the house hasn't changed any. If the well, house, people, had, people. If the, if, but if the house is looking and acting like. It was built in the year 2000 and you change nothing right why five years later is it looking and acting like it was built in 2004 if you've changed exactly nothing? that's why they say you don't change the effective age unless there's improvement made i agree with you <laughs> but they're saying they're saying you don't change tyler it. says don't change it ever well if there's improvement made the system's going to change it all on its own because it has an improvement yes. and it's going to calculate by the improvement where it's but supposed to a be. A brand new kitchen and, you know, new interior and everything else then, should recognize a much newer. Yes. But if you've done, age, if, then if you like, if you've you done think, nothing to your house in 10 years, you're no, it would probably have the same effective it, age. Yeah, yeah. You, it shouldn't change. It shouldn't just, just because it's been there longer. Right. Shouldn't change. Right. But you know, wouldn't that, <laughs> if you redo a kitchen or, because that's the interior, that's where your, these come in, not the effective age. Well, that would affect, that, that would affect the effective age. Yeah. Any kind of upgrade would change your effective age. But if you don't touch it, then it, I don't believe it should change. But if you make any upgrades, then yeah, because you're adding a new component. Right. Yeah, a house that was built in 1990 may have had an effective age of say 2000, it was reasonably well kept, but they went in last year and put a whole brand new kitchen in. Mm -hmm. Well, that should bring the effective age up to 2015. I agree, that I agree with. And if they didn't take care of it, then why wouldn't that make the effective age change and go down? In five years that may have had- Well, that no would fall under your condition. If they didn't no, take no, care of it, is, and you get yeah. out there to look at the house, but that 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 condition that, is going to lower. Right. The, the, all the things should affect the effective age. I yeah. Mean, what? Well, the effective age shouldn't be changing. The effective, think, age, the effective age. We tried it on a couple. When you change it three years, and mm. it takes a figure and throws it. Oh yeah, it was way increasing the figure five thousand, six thousand dollars. Yeah, right. I difference. understand. That's why they're saying do not change the effective year, but just go in and change the conditions. You know, if somebody improves, you might have to increase the condition as being better, not change the effective age. But that changes the effective age. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Are you sure? The way it worked on <laughs> that's, the that's, way that's, that's how it works. <laughs> I I'm I'm pretty sure that that's exactly it. If, if there's an improvement within the house, the effective age of the house increases. And it should do that on its own. If you put that, if those permits go in and you put that improvement in and you increase or decrease the grade mm. 
and the condition, yeah. then those things should increase or decrease the effectiveness. You shouldn't loss. increase the grade though. That's my what I've been researching no, the all grade, along. The grade, the grade does not the change. Condition. Okay, it condition. would be a very rare thing to change grade. And we talked this over with regard to that uniformity list approach to the log houses. The grade is established when it is built. Well, your grade just changed. Why? Yours went up to B minus. It was a C. Did you do that when you were doing the overall comparisons and trying to make everything yes. uniform? Yeah. But, you, but that's yes. not accurate. Yours is the same year, the same kit, same everything that it should not, you should, why would you change the grade? Going up. I wouldn't have chosen to. Well, you must have, because well, I must have agreed to it because it was it was part of the overall change overall changes. Right. Looking for that uniformity. Yeah. Well, that one didn't make it. Uh, I don't know. That, that wouldn't have been my choice because you were built in 80 74. I mean 74. That sometimes it's old, not our choice. It's, it's just the what it style. is. Mm. No, you put that in. Right, because she was trying to get everything uniform so okay yeah this makes so my head in with the others and it exactly it she came can't up to that new she can't skip hers right. just because she doesn't want to well i'm right. not saying just skip it i'm just okay but i don't understand why changing the the grade it didn't change your effective year and what I see is when you do change a grade, the effective year lots of times changes. Well, we'll run some more tests. And it's like, that is the case. So why did that? I see not some change, some not changing. That's exactly, I don't understand why it mm. does that. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, me know. too. And that's why I'm saying this isn't accurate. So I'll send in an inquiry tonight saying exactly how is the value calculated? Is the condition taken from the three listings up above or the single one down below? Which one does it use? But and, they should be, be correct. They should go across and be come out right. And that's what I'm not seeing is they're not equaling out to be what it should be. Like three, five, and three should not be an average. That's a good, even though it says average. And you've got down here three, three, and three, which is a good. You got five, fives, and fives, which are average. And there's another one here that didn't come out right. Here's one, two, three, and a three, and it says average. And those are all very okay. good, good, and good. And it says In, average. Okay, exterior, interior condition. Okay, very good, yeah. Just wanted to make sure we weren't looking at two different things here. Okay, here's one. Look at this one. This is on Sarf Shirtshire Road. It's um, effective years, same as mine. And it says good. Well, two, three, average, and a three. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the what's the replacement value is 238. Yeah. And you come over here and it's got the same 85% good, 100% finish. And their finish assessment is quite a bit down. It's 208. So how does that equal out? Is it an older house? Nope. It's a 78. Okay. So it's a newer house. Well, wait a minute. Is she looking at the chart that isn't right? It's right. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. I'm wondering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you did the new chart. Remember, you are you looking you at the chart the that we, you were looking at thing. yesterday? I couldn't get the right. I was explaining to her yesterday that I, I I am unable to get the one column that influences things. I'm unable to pull that over. Well, you just report. told me yesterday this this was accurate. You just were going to add columns so yes. I could see it. So because it's the and the columns are going to generate some different answers over the right. So these aren't the right totals. No, those are not. That's correct. They are not. Oh, you didn't tell me that. You just. I'm sorry. I thought I implied it. <laughs> because those are not included. 
we went over this and one one column the i don't know no one here do you th read this one because this is what the top columns say these are the top columns okay this this is the house and this did not include Anything, anything like porches, like porches or anything this, or decks or anything like that. That was just on the house, the, the central part of the house alone. It and didn't then, even and include then, my then wing it, online. And then it then it computed it, and that's why all of end columns. I said they don't look right, mm -hmm. and that's why it's we found the, out that it that it has to add to the house value. It has to add the value of other additions. Well, so are our property cards all wrong? No, no. the chart. The, the, chart, the chart is, is wrong. wrong. It, well, it doesn't have that column in it. Well, the chart is saying reading what mine says. No. Yes, it is. Not the end, not the end column. Because what it does is it adds the replacement cost new of the house. Mm -hmm. If there's a part of the house, let's say it's a two-story house with a one-story wing. Mm -hmm. The one-story wing will be listed in price separately. And then there's a deck. And then there's a front porch. Those three areas are not included. This program does not include them in the price of the house. It brings them up separately as a second figure. That may be fifty thousand dollars more if there's an addition, for example. You know, I don't know, hundred thousand dollars more, and then it takes those two figures and adds them together for the replacement cost new of the total structure. So you are saying then it that takes these the, are all low. I think they were they were all they all came out different, right? Then it takes the replacement cost new of the house depreciates it and carries it down. The replacement cost new of the additions depreciates that, carries it down and adds those together. Well, I- For the final I, value of the at, house. And I'm, I cannot bring those addition figures over into the chart. Well, this doesn't make sense to me because I'm looking at the property cards, property card right here. And for 2022, it has it listed less than this one right here. It depends on what, what it added and how much it depreciated. So, oh, because I thought you were saying it was all more. No, oh, no, it, they're all different. change. I'm oh. not saying they're oh. more or less. Some of them came out even that we checked. Mm -hmm. Some of them were up a little bit and some of them were down. I, okay. There again, I, I looked at it and I said, okay. what's, what's going on? I we couldn't make it. And we finally figured out where the steps taking all the that they were showing stuff. us and um what we still have to figure out is how to get that where extra. where is it getting the rating for condition is it getting it from the three condition listings up above or from the single condition well, listing down below we took those three completely out yep and then we put them back in and nothing happened so it's got to be getting it from the bottom. Got to be getting it from the bottom. But, but then I we don't took know the bottom why. one out and it picked it up from somewhere else. It, it doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. So, because I can't figure mine out to come out right. <laughs> well, yours, I mean, we're talking generally yeah. here, not, not just, not just yours. yours. No, no, but it, I'm thinking if I can't figure mine out to come out right, how can I figure out anybody else's? I mean, yeah, we want to be able to explain it easily and clearly to our property owners. Yeah, I think that's very important. Of course, it, of course it is. Yeah. That's always one of our primary goals. And to be able, uh, for me, and to be able to compare it to another house very similar and say, this is what this one is valued at. This is what yours should be valued at. Right. We and need to be able to rely on the figures and on the assumptions behind the figures. Mm -hmm. So, so I'll send that other email off tonight. Bill program showed us, we asked for a hot cost, it was called, 
and it would calculate everything up. And then it would show us, okay, here's the land and it came into this much an acre. So this much value for land. And then the secondary land came into this much an acre. This is the value for that. And it added them up and then it went through the house and said, here's your base cost for the house for X number of square feet. And here's the cost for your, your fireplace. And here's the cost for your heating system. Mm -hmm. And here's, that was wonderful. This doesn't do it. And what program did that? The old program. The one that the doesn't exist. Oh. That the state discontinued. Oh, okay. Unfortunately. All right. And it couldn't be, yeah. it was going to be costing way too much for the number of towns they had involved in it. Right. To you telling me that. Uh, have sequel upgrade and, and because they were backing out of that too. And I still have out questions of that, method. that when they brought the program, the old program in compiled it into the mm -hmm. new program. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it did it right. Mm. Yeah, it's going to happen again. It's, yeah, well, it's, it's um, yeah, if you again, do it again, it's, it's going to happen it's, again. But. It's the interpretation of what fields mean what, because the fields aren't the same, and it's one program is guessing what the other one means. So well. it'll do it all over again. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm continuing with the analysis of figures and we've got to I'll try and get a clear answer from them tomorrow on exactly how they, how the program calculates it. I'd like a written out calculation, itemized, so to speak, mm -hmm. an itemized bill. And then you want we the can path. take it. You want, to, you want to visually see the path? Yes, we do. And then we can take it and look at our cards mm -hmm. and say, okay, this is what it used. It used this one right here. Well, and this is what it's called in the program. So we know which field is important. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just interesting because when you look at just the numbers, just reading the charts, you know, some of them will be like, equal out, be fair, you know, or come out correct. And then some don't where it should be a three is a good, but it's say an average, you know, mm -hmm. a four, what's a four? Four average is good. Well, then it's rating it as a good. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's not right. It should be average good. So, but you know, along with that four, were there a couple of other goods that kind of- No, nope, they were all it? fours. Okay. And it shouldn't no. be a uh, good. And so what's it? Well, this one says all twos and it's rating it as excellent. So that's wrong. And two is very good. Yes, but it says excellent. Mm -hmm. So are you reading this or are you reading that? That's so we don't know. Exactly. That's why we have to find the path. That's, yeah. yeah. You want the path. We mm -hmm. can't see the path. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any way for us and, to see the path. I doubt it. No, but the. They should be an IT course. person should be able to tell you the path. Okay, this is where it starts, and it goes from here and takes this and divides or adds or multi and and then from that point it goes to this point and then from this point to this point and all these things in between they mean nothing in the calculation. They're there for general knowledge. I think I may write directly to a fellow who works for them in IT who was very, very helpful during the training classes. He's down in West Virginia and he works from home and he was terrific. We both understood what we assessors were asking and was able to explain things to us. You've also got that wonderful assessing clerk that you have talked to. Yes, this has been right going now. on since April when I've been questioning. Well, we I... keep, we get, we solve one thing and then another one shows up. You know, you focus on one until you think you've solved it or answered that question. And then you realize that another part of the equation maybe isn't what it ought to be. And so you address that one next. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much lower do you want your house? Let's start from there. <laughs> what do you mean how much lower? Well, you then? want your value to be lower. You don't, you think your value is lower than what's on that card. What is a fair value for you? And then maybe we can figure out where the calculations are and then, Work from there, work backwards. 
considering the sales. Yeah, but maybe we can work backwards. Well, I don't know if we can do that because that doesn't make sense when I look at what people, what the, uh, so that's what we're obliged to aim for full fair market value, mm -hmm. which is demonstrated by sales. Well, I would do that if, the, if we were all the same, if we would all go by the sales and I would, I mean, I'm, I'm going to do my fair share. We but, use, but it's when I look at other ones and they're not the same. I mean, I'm, if they're all looking like they're in order, I agree with that. But when they're not, but I don't want to be the highest one. You're way, you're way, you're way in the middle. But no. where in the C, in an average condition, I'm the highest one. And that's where I'm having a problem because I feel like it's being assessed at good and not average. We changed it to average. It, but it didn't change the value. So what, how does that I make sense? I think that it, it wrote the good, but wasn't reading the good. I think it was reading the average from the other place. It wrote the good. They kept the good label. I think it was using okay. the average for okay. calculations. So when I'm comparing it to everybody else in grade C condition average, why is mine the highest? Smallest? It's not the smallest. Okay. I don't know. We, we use in our mass appraisal of residential properties. There are the three approaches to value, the cost approach, the income approach, and the market approach. Mm -hmm. Income is used just on income producing properties. We use the cost approach, and then it is the costs, the, the values reached in the cost approach are ratified by the market sales. That's why we have to have our values within a certain percentage of 100%. And so when we look at the market sales for a couple of houses, I think of one in particular down off 116, it's very similar to yours in size, in appointments, and has an outbuilding of about equal utility. It has maybe about the same amount of land, and it's sold in the 300s, as I recall. Um, that would indicate that your property should be in the neighborhood where that one sold. It was on the market a good long time. It was seen by a number of... I don't know which one you're talking about. <laughs> 234 Matthews. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have another question. Um, and I understand that sold quite sold high, but it, uh -huh, pardon me? Sold for 334,000. Okay. And now, well, last year it was assessed for 22, it was assessed at 271. Mm -hmm because you wanted to increase it because I think it was assessed much lower than that. It was because that was the value as of January one before. And when it went on the market, we had a chance to see the interior mm -hmm. and all the photos and that it was different than we had assumed. Okay. And I believe if I'm comparing it accurately, you changed the grade on it which made it go up. Like that it. had to do with that uniformity review. Part of me is inclined to look at where we had all the log houses, determine what the grades they, were, they had when they, on the old system and put them back to there. Well, but mine was a B, which, and you would told me because I added dormers. I started out as a C, you said I added dormers. So you moved it up to a B minus. This is what you told me. All right. So my question was, why is the house down the road being built with dormers and it's a grade C?
which is 2000, built in 2004 and mine's in 78. Well, the age of the dormers doesn't matter. No, even, but the point is somebody building a newer home mm -hmm. is a C and mine is up to a B minus because I added dormers. That was my argument. That can't be the only reason. That's what you told me. Look, well, certainly in your case, it made the upstairs a great deal more usable. Well, a whole lot of dormers, you can't use a whole lot, but yes, it does give a little bit of room, but you still got the peak with a little dormer over here. Mm -hmm. So you got, you know, so you don't have a, it's more light than right. an actual headroom because right. you only got a little spot that you can, yeah, now you, you have almost a full dormer over the kitchen. Was that always there? The kitchen or the back wing? That was always there. Okay. Because you can't get upstairs. Point is, you can't get upstairs unless you have a dormer there. The house roof is so tight. If you don't have a dormer to go upstairs, you can't get up there. Mm -hmm. well, that was a design flaw, wasn't it? Well, no, they all have dormers. They're only 16 feet wide. If you don't have a dormer there, you can't go upstairs and have headroom. You just can't. It's just, you can't. Hmm. You go up 16 feet with a roof like this, you have mm -hmm. to have a dormer. Yeah, you have a lower pitch than, than I do, yeah. You have a gambrel roof. I have a gambrel roof, and then I have a pitch roof on the back, on the wing. Do you have a dormer on that? Yep, we have the full dormer across the back. Mm -hmm. The stairwell goes up into the dormer, yes. Yeah, and if you didn't have that dormer there, you cannot get up those stairs. It would have been very, very difficult. Yes, it would have been very, very tight at the top. <laughs> well, you wouldn't have headroom. It wouldn't be code. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, how did we get onto that? So there was always that there. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just questioning why things happen the way they happen. And that's when I pointed out. Also, I pointed out that you had me as way over roof space. You had me in 1.5. But do we want to go over all that? I don't know. No, I don't think no. we want to go on. I no. think we want to straight yes. general the group out. I, I, yes. I hate talking about just your house. I, that, well, I guess I talked about I mean, I know that. you use it as an example. Yes, yes. But I, we have to look at that group of houses. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. As, as a whole. I, that's my feeling. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some of them may be, maybe the grade isn't right on some of them. I I don't know. I mean, I haven't been in many well, of them. I mean, I stand on the outside to look at them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's as far as, and, and I, a lot of yeah, these of came them. over from the old program. I have never looked at them. Mm -hmm. it's just stuff just came over. Mm -hmm. And whether that's right or wrong, whether it carried it over right, I don't know. Right, right. I, 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 I understand what you're saying. So, so I think mine had been changed quite a long time ago and I never checked on it. So um, my encouragement to everyone out in Conway to check their property cards. Absolutely. They need to pull their property cards. <laughs> well, that's what we're happy to go over them with you. Yeah. So anyways. Believe me. But so right also, now, what also we, we got... have a problem with the buildings without depreciation. I'm just wondering why depreciation changes. Without any depreciation? Well, it, it's change. It's changing less depreciation. It's probably, I, I don't know. Right so it, you're, we were looking at this whole thing in for 2021. Well, this is part of the program. Yes. Where the depreciation is not accurate. For 2021, I had a depreciation of 76, which brought it to this amount. Yeah. Well, actually, we figured in that too. But then in 22, the depreciation is only 81. Why did that happen? And I can tell you why, because the effective year changed. And everything else stayed the same. 
well, the grade and the condition both stayed the same. Yeah. Just dollars per square foot was the same. So the replacement cost new was the same. But why didn't the depreciation? Oh, this is, they we took off the local factor for 22. And that added 6% to everything. We had used to have a local factor of 0.94 against everything to bring the calculated values mm -hmm. down to market. Mm -hmm. And when that came off, it added 6% back on each structure or piece of land. Now, let me see if the old figure plus 6% makes the new figure. Well, figure out what's 78% depreciation on that one. On this oh, one. hang on a minute. Hang on. Let me, let me get. Okay. Okay. So, because I was at home and I figured it out. <laughs> okay. And it's not. I am as 1.06 equals. I can't. I never. I organize when I'm home. <laughs> What's the difference here? Oh, oh, so, oh minus. Equals. Ah, this is the one I'm looking five for. By five nine oh. Okay, that increased. That section increased thirteen percent. And so a certain amount of it was from taking off the local factor of 0.94% uh, of 94%. That would have bumped it up 6% right away. So my garage went up right there, 12% last year. Mm -hmm. The average went up 6.5. Well, there was both the change of the local factor the year before, plus we added 6% last year. Yeah, but everybody else went up 6% over one year. I went up 12%. Yeah. Year. So that's why I'm saying what is going, you know. And you got me in here for the effective year changed. Why? You got me in for 19, 1990. And over here, you got me in for 1995. So why did the effective year change? These are both showing 1995 for effective years. Well, this one is not. Every time I get something new, <sighs> new information, it changes. This is showing one. You just printed these yesterday. Yeah. Well, this is my new set of questions for Tyler. I thought we just went, went, went over this one at the time you were going to send that in about depreciation. I had another question about it that went in. Um, I was hoping to wind this up tonight, but I don't see how we can until we get a couple more questions answered. So I think that we have to. Get our questions answered first. And then see about recalculating. I still do feel that the overall value indicated by the program is on the low side. But I want it to be properly calculated. Well, I don't know that right at the moment. You know, we could look at every house in town and say oh, just about everyone is undervalued, not, you know. No, they are now. Yeah, they are. I mean, yeah. Is. I agree 100%. Yeah, right. I mean, everyone. Yep. But it's got to be fair across the board. That's what I'm saying. Yes. And that's why. And, and, but you can and say, well, you're not, you're not overvalued or you're not fair market value to me. And yes, you would be right. But is it fair compared to how everybody else is being assessed? No. And that's my point. And I think it's because she doesn't want to be the highest one in her grade. Well, no. I think it should be. Well, that's what you said. You said, I don't want to be the highest. Yeah. Well, yeah, early I did. I, I, I don't feel as though I should be the highest if I'm average. 
I'm a small, it's a small house. If you're looking at it, but when we get to the point, of, if we're looking at averages, all averages. Yes. Somewhere among all of those averages, there's going to be a range of values. Mm -hmm. We don't know where you'll fall in there. Well, it way. should be in the middle of an average because I'm a, um, where am I? I think it'll be a little higher than that because your house is smaller. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I think we have to just table this issue for now. Mm -hmm. and table these questions mm -hmm. and try and get some more answers. If I would talk to that fellow, I'll be dealing with someone directly and quite frankly, bypassing the uh, inquiry process that they have in place, whereby they, you send them an email with a question, they write it up on a- Yeah, that's the way it must work. I know, a repair slip, and then they put it out on these bulletin boards mm -hmm. in the air and somebody says, okay, I'll tackle that the next one. one available. Well, yeah, I, you know, I think you also the need to look that. at this, maybe not this too much to change in one year. If we can straighten this out, would be good. Mm -hmm. But um, to, I see the values of the really nice, not to pick on your but the, but the really nice. Oh, we're low there. We know that. Yes. All of them. Yes. And it's, how do you get those all up? We I'm, may have to add another category of excellent. Because in order to bring in prices high enough, uh, we need to look at probably the very goods and the excellence together, and make sure that we're sorted correctly, mm -hmm. that the very goods are all similar, that the excellence have something better, that they're all similar. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to put out one more thought. Okay. Um, because when I'm looking at these charts and the valuations across the board, yeah. I look at it and I see ranches, small little houses are, that's, that's quite high, I think, for what they are. Well, I'm not going to disagree with that because my ranch is assessed. I think yours is way high. It is very high for I what agree. it is and the condition it's in and the I problems agree. it is very high. I agree. And in my, I was an interior visit. I offered that a long time ago. We'll take you up on it. I, I, um, I mean, my finished basement is an illegal living space, so that means it's not a finished basement. There's no insulation. Well, okay, hold on. <laughs> I want to get my point across here, <laughs> um, because I think when you, um, it's like anything else, and with our government, the low people seem to carry the weight of everybody, and I think you're. The, the assessment is high percentage wise on the small little average little ranch to cover the bulk of our assessments that we need to come up with. Does that make sense? Yeah. It does, but that's where looking at sales helps us too. Yes, but when you see a, a really nice house and it can sell for a million and a half, and they're only assessed for 400,000, and you've got a little ranch yeah. assessed for 200, mm -hmm. 250, and it can sell for 350, there's a huge difference there. Yes, the proportions are different. And I'm, different. that's what I'm saying. That isn't quite, that doesn't make sense to me as being fair. We're trying for uniformity and fairness. Exactly, and that's why I'm saying that I, Okay, new eyes are seeing it differently. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I know when I was talking to you, you say the footprint. Well, some of the little ranches built in the 70s, you built them because they were small, inexpensive, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing them being so assessed high per square foot. Well, they may not be high oh. in, in relation to the whole scheme of things. They may be where they should be. And some of the others are too low. Oh, well, okay. Then you can I, put not, it that way. I, I, you I, can I put question it that way. whether there's anything that is valued too low, too low in okay. this town. You could mm -hmm. you could put it that way. But I'm just looking at okay. I was comparing it to the, some of the better ones. It seems high, but you could say they're not assessed accurate whatsoever. Then I agree. Yeah. So if you want to keep that ranch style at that rate, that's fine. But the others need to go up question came up the other night we were looking at this this house that started out as a camp 
remember that one. And it's now been completely uh, gutted and redone and is a house. It's a year round house that's rented. Mm -hmm. So I say we have to take it out of camps. As a camp, it was a good one. What was there for camp finish was better than average. But as a house, it's not going to be a good. Probably a lower grade. Yeah. But it, um, it, it's, it's still going to be higher than it was as a camp. Yeah. Or it better be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially if they got it and refinished right. it all. Right. Oh, which one are you looking at? <clears throat> which one? This particular one. Okay, right here. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So we're going to move it into the one story houses. Well, yeah, you got the exterior as a good condition, condition. is very good. Condition, right. The exterior condition is good. But the grade interior. is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you change that grade, that's going to change a lot. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying the grade. In that particular case, because it has become something other than what it started out, mm -hmm. the grade has to be examined. So from what I've been seeing, a grade can change, you know, like you take a whole house and you redo the whole thing. I think it was 25% changing of a house mm -hmm. is when you can't change, under 25%, you can't change the grade. Or if you, they put on a due addition, mm -hmm. you may have to value that differently right. than the whole main house. Right, because it may be a much better quality of construction, finish mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And you have to just wait for the two pieces to settle out in arithmetic and come up with a full value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I move we table. What? Yes, I second. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Anything uh, else on your list? Or? I don't think you want to look at the demonstration now, or do you? Well, no, you had a meeting. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. Because the demo. Oh, oh, you do. Yeah. But um, we can come in anytime and we can do it. I can't forward it, it's encrypted. I'm going on vacation. Yeah, no, you, you are. Can, can I get the new information? I mean, can you print it up so I, I, I can, can add it to it? Because you're saying this isn't accurate. I still I'd, can't get that column that and I'd like shows to, the additional information. And I want that because I like to look it over. And I know. You sent me something and that didn't come out on my iPad whatsoever. Okay. <laughs> it just doesn't. Now I'm going to ask them also how I can pull that, you know, what they have to unlock so that I can pull those columns. Well, it took over. us half an hour to figure out what was going on. <sighs> we finally found it and tested it just sufficiently to see what was happening, and then had to had to. Uh, well, I still, you said you were able to change mine, and I, I question how it can change everything to average, and nothing changes over here in the prices and the values, I should say. That's I know that's put yeah. A, B, and C in, and yeah. nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, do we have any further business before the meeting? I move we adjourn. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <I> agree. <laughs> Adjournment is at 6 58. I don't know. 54. Okay.